Oil is back in the news. It's almost been a year and a half since oil really kind of hit the fan. Um, if you remember, about a year and a half ago, OPEC as well as the shutdown, uh, those two combinations caused oil prices to plummet nearly 50% for most. Um, and stock prices for oil companies uh, on the average dropped 50 to 75%. So when that shutdown happened, when OPEC um, decided that they weren't going to decrease production, um, that was a great buying opportunity. And, and I, that's really where I went heavily during the pandemic. And it was nice position. Um, over the last, let's say, six months, there hasn't really been a lot of price action. Now, my positions really don't matter. What you really need to know is that oil prices for a period of time went negative. That caused the stock prices to go down and it created a buying opportunity. During that time, there was a uh, almost indefinite, I mean, almost 100% percent chance in my mind that oil prices were going to recover at some point to a normalized level. I was thinking around $50. Now, fast forward about a year into it, I was doing stock analysis on British Petroleum, um, and generally, I was looking mainly at commodity prices comparison to stocks um, in the oil and gas industry and looking for opportunities. Now, at that time, one of the key factors in the analysis was oil was anticipated in my mind to be at $80 to $100 um, a barrel. And at this point, we're reached the $80 mark. Are we going to get to $100? Now, I really want to talk about why oil prices are where they are right now. What are some things that have happened and where oil prices are going to go in the future? The first thing I need to start off with is oil price. Oil is just a commodity. Um, the price will fluctuate with supply and demand. You have people who actually take oil out of the ground, refine it, and make the byproducts, and then you have the people who consume it. Um, one of the large consumptions is vehicles, right? Um, and so during the pandemic, we kind of saw what that baseline level of demand was going to be. And we saw that supply up here and demand down here. And we saw that because of um, storage issues, the price of oil just went way, way down. It just actually went negative for a period of time. Over time, the suppliers brought their production down and the demand and supply started to level off. We saw $40 and then eventually $50 oil where it leveled off for a good period of time. Um, and then the economy started to pick back up. So you had supply where it was, or you had demand where it was at and supply where it was at, and it was brought down to meet the demand level. Well, demand started to rise as the economy started to open. We saw a little bit of price increases. There was another thing about that supply. So there's these storage containers that supply store oil, and those were very full. So even as um, demand was increasing, you weren't seeing a huge increase in oil prices uh, or an increase in uh, production of oil because um, you know those storage things needed to be brought down to a normalized level um, because all the storage was actually full to capacity. You had that's why oil prices went negative, is because there was literally nowhere to store oil and they were paying people to take the oil away from them because they didn't have anywhere to put it. So once we started to see storage levels start to come down producers actually started increasing their production. And remember that demand was also slowly going up as well. Now, as that was happening, oil prices were getting to that 50, then they got to 60, and then they were approaching $70. And they got to $70. Um, and I was thinking they were gonna get to the 80 and $200 range fairly quickly after that. But what happens is there was some political conversation an actual legislation that came out and said they wanted to ban oil vehicles. Um, I think in the year in somewhere in Europe uh, or maybe a larger part of Europe. And so that had a negative impact on oil companies as well as whatever, for whatever reason, the oil price of oil also took a hit. Um, there's also been a shutdown kind of on off on off kind of thing. So as that fluctuate, the suppliers have been kind of bringing production online at a very, I would say, a very slow rate um, just because they don't want that shutdown fluctuation to affect them. Now, almost a year and a half later, I think really suppliers are feeling more comfortable and are going to start opening up supply because there's, you know, the price of oil, the commodity price is historically pretty high. And so they want to catch it on a good thing. Um, remember, a lot of these guys are profitable around the $30 range and some of the, um, you know, like Saudi Arabia, that's even lower. 
So when oil prices are at $80, now's the time to make your money, right? At least historically. Now, if we look at demand and where it's kind of trending, shutdowns are less of a concern. And uh, with the vaccines, we kind of probably assume that this is going to be more of a long-term uh, long-term issue with COVID. Um, and so I, I think some of the restrictions are going to start playing off. People are going to go and continue to drive. I don't think there's going to be a ton of fluctuation in that. The economy is starting to open back up. Supply routes are pretty constant and really didn't take too big of a hit, but things are starting to open up and stay more consistent. And the future is a lot brighter in terms of the economy staying open. Now there's two things driving oil prices that I can kind of see right now. And one of them I'm a little skeptical of, and it's honestly been way, 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 I think blown out of proportion. And from what I've read, it's actually not a reason why oil prices should be any higher right now. Um, the first one is um, an oil shortage in the UK. So if you go to any fuel station in the UK, apparently it's hard or there's a long wait or there's not oil there at all. But the key here is, is it sounds like it's because there's no one to actually take, you know, the midstream business of taking the oil from the refinery or wherever they pick up the crude, uh, maybe not crude, the refined oil and gasoline to the station itself. So that's not a, a, you know, a lack of product. That's a lack of, you know, transportation, truck drivers, folks to be able to actually take these, you know, the good um, to the actual location where it's sold. So that shouldn't really affect the commodity price. In fact, in my opinion, it's a, UK is a relatively small market if you compare it to the entire world. But in my mind is you, if, if people can't buy it, that means it's not being sold. That means inventory is building up somewhere. So that inventory is building up somewhere. And if it's not being transported out to the stations, at some point they're gonna have to cut off and say, look, we can't buy anymore until we get this stuff out of here. So I don't understand how this is affecting commodity prices in the short, you know, in the short term. Um, I, I don't think it should have an effect at this very moment. Problem number two is there seems to be an energy issue in China. Now the government has gone out and said, we need to secure more energy assets. Um, and that includes natural gas, it includes coal, and those um, associated commodities price increasing also gives pressure on oil prices. Um, and so that increases a little bit of the pressure. Now with those two problems discussed, as well as the history in the last year and a half, it's important to note kind of what is going to drive commodity prices for oil here in the more long term, okay? We've seen the impact in the short term of these two problems. I indicated that one, I didn't think that was that big of a deal. And the Chinese is definitely more of a short term, at least from what I can tell right now. The um, move to EVs, that is definitely a primary concern for the long term commodity price of oil. But in the near term, it's not going to be a super, and by near term, I mean a year to three years, it shouldn't be a super big impact. But anytime a new uh, company adopts something like that, you're going to see a negative impact in oil commodity prices. It's mainly, uh, you know, an impact on the stock market, um, on those individual companies, as well as those who, you know, rely on the commodity price to, you know, for profitability. Um, the other thing there is suppliers such as OPEC and those that are local to individual markets, as the commodity price remains high, there's an incentive for them to start to break some of the, the agreements that they made um, on oil prices. They're gonna start to stretch themselves a little bit more, start to um, increase supply. And my prediction is, this is probably the biggest risk to commodity prices for oil going down. And I say risk, it could be a good thing if you're a consumer of oil, you probably want that to be super low. If you're an investor, you want that price to be very, very high, or you own those companies, or you're trading um, you know, long on oil, whatever. It depends on whatever side of the play you're, you're going for. But if you want commodity prices to go high on oil, you really need suppliers to you know, keep production relatively slow if they're going to increase it. My biggest fear and what we've seen in the past is when commodity prices start to approach $100 or even 80 bucks, there's a lot of margin there for companies to make money. You're gonna see people in OPEC specifically start to cheat, start to increase the, um, you know, supply over what they were saying they're going to do. And even in other markets that really, I mean, such as the US, 
there's a huge incentive to start producing more oil. It's when you make your money. So my gut feeling is if this continues, this $80 range, it starts to stretch a little higher, you're going to see people start cheating more and more and more. Demand, I don't think, is going to take a big hit. Anyway, it's going to start to stay. It's going to stay relatively flat. I don't think there's going to be any huge hit there. But you're going to start to see oil start to uh, oil supply start to go up. Production is going to increase and supply will also increase. And at that point, you're going to see negative pressure on oil prices. Now, that's my prediction. I do think there still is a possibility in the near term in the next year for oil prices to hit $100, especially if um, there's some compounding effect on some of the things that are coming out in the news right now like the UK thing, like the China thing, if there continues to be pressure in that direction, then I think that um, that's a very well possibility and $100 oil is very likely. Also saw an article that there's some, been some um, options on $200 priced uh, commodity on oil. So that's just, that's crazy, that's another side. I've also seen articles that say, you know, $50 oil is right around the corner. So um, you gotta be careful here. Um, a lot of these companies that are, um, you know, let's say Exxon's, your Shell, um, you know, companies like I invest in right now are MRO, Energy Transfer, um, British Petroleum. These companies, even if oil is at $50, they're going to be making a good amount of money. So um, I'm not too worried about the stock prices. Uh, they will fluctuate as commodity prices go up and down. If we get closer to 100, we're going to see some really great valuations for these companies, and it may be a good selling opportunity. If commodity prices go down in the near term, again, I still like the companies, and I still think, well, right now, I still do think there is some considerable upside for oil prices, as long as suppliers are very moderate on how they increase the oil supply. Let me know what you think about oil prices in the comments below. Hit that like button. Consider subscribing for personal finance, investing, and stock analysis. My name is Frank, Frank Finance, out.